Following the mediocre results of my S1 video, I've decided to see if I can redeem myself with my new series, which I have now renamed Dead on Arrival, where I talk about bad locomotives and establish why I won't put them on my extinct steam locomotives lists, and or build them out of LEGO. The purpose of these videos are to educate and inform viewers, and in my case, for me to redeem myself with my series. Hello and welcome to Dead on Arrival. In these videos, I talk about bad and unsuccessful locomotives by telling their story with their flaws and establish why I leave them off my extinct and favorite steam locomotives list, and or why I choose not to build them out of LEGO. The purpose of these videos are to educate and inform the viewers and not to insult viewers. It's pretty obvious why I left the LBSCR E2s and Bullied Leader off my extinct British steam locomotives list. But what about the third locomotive in the This, That, or These segment for the intro of that video? Well, this is what this video is all about. This is the story of, and why I personally despise, the Great Western Railway's only 462 Pacific, the Great Bear. Built in 1908 under the design of George Jackson Churchwood, number 111 named Great Bear was the railway's only 462 locomotive ever built. There are differing views as to why Churchwood and the GWR built the Pacific when current and future locomotive practice for the railway was centered on 460 10-wheelers. In other English, the railway preferred 460 10-wheelers over 462 Pacifics, and this locomotive pretty much showcased the reason why. Oswald Stevens Knock believed that the locomotive was primarily an exercise in boiler design, with Churchwood looking forward to a time when his Star Class 460s could no longer cope with increasing loads. The front end layout of the engine was the same as that of the Star Class, but the design of the boiler was entirely new with a 23-foot barrel which was longed by both contemporary and later standards. Churchward adopted the 462 wheel arrangement because he wanted to fit a wider firebox than the stars over the trailing wheels. Unfortunately, unlike the stars and ladder 460s like the successful castles and kings, the Great Bear was a gigantic failure. It made little improvement over existing GWR locomotives, the boiler barrel was made more for bulk and not efficiency, the trailing wheels axle boxes were prone to overheating, the locomotive was underpowered, and the Great Bear's biggest and, and most obvious problem, route availability. The Great Bear was so highly restricted by its size that it could only operate on the Paddington to Bristol main line, making the locomotive almost completely useless. In fact, just as useless as the PRRR's S1. <sighs> Heck, it was way more useless than even the massive King Class 460s, which could only operate on the London, Taunton, Plymouth, via Bristol and Westbury, and London, Birmingham, Wolverhampton via Bristol main lines, but that was just about the King's only problem, and they didn't have, well, serious mechanical problems to add on for it. Yet the Great Bear remained the railway's flagship locomotives until the castles came along in 1923. Oh boy! Churchwood attempted to improve the 71-foot-long Pacific's performance by adding a Swindon No. 3 superheater and top feed apparatus, but the excellent performance of the Star Class and the advent of the First World War stopped any more further experimentation without significant improvement. In case you're wondering about the tractive effort, just 27,800 pounds. For comparison, the Castle Class 460s had a higher tractive effort of 31,625 pounds, making the Great Bear an embarrassment and thus assuring it as a failure as soon as the Castle came along. So to summarize, this thing was so crappy of a Pacific that it was just as crappy as the infamous A2 slash 2s, and its tractive effort was garbage compared to the castles and kings. No wonder that building a GWR Pacific was a really stupid idea. I mean, building a Pacific for the GWR was a stupid idea. In fact, just as stupid as an idea of, well, converting Reading 2100 to burn oil, or what Edward Thompson did to the the P2s, that being rebuilding them into his infamous A2 slash 2s. I mean, why did the GWR even 
consider selling this thing to the LMS or LMER? Surely they could have made a better locomotive out of this thing. And when I say better locomotive, either a 460 or maybe even a better 462 out of it, but they just never thought of it. Even the individuals of the Great Western Railway asked that same question too. Not to say that its president or George Jackson Churchwood, its locomotive designer, was an idiot. Ultimately, while the Great Bear was undergoing repairs, it was rebuilt into a castle-class locomotive and renamed Viscount Churchill in 1924, ending its once laughable career. The GWR never built a 462 again. The locomotive retained its number of 111, by the way. The 111, now Viscount Churchill, continued its career on the GWR as a castle until being retired in 1953, and ultimately scrapped. Fortunately, eight castle-class locomotives are still around today. All that remains of the Great Bear is one of its nameplates. So if you're wondering why I left the Great Bear off my top 10 extinct UK steam locomotives, now you know why. Well, I hope you at least enjoyed the video and or learned something new. If so, press the like button and subscribe to my channel to support it and to see more content like this soon. If you have any suggestions on what you want me to review next, feel free to let me know in the comments section below. Thanks for watching.